Hi, this is Ryan with Better Tattooing, and today we're going to be getting into some technical stuff uh, with tattoos, and we're going to be telling you how to utilize trauma that we create in a tattoo uh, to amplify your art and affect aging. All right. <laughs> Okay, now that's over with. All right, some people are gonna get blown away by this and I imagine it's gonna be a little bit too technical, but for those of us who are trying to like really maximize these foundational aspects of tattooing or maybe focus on how to just like push things a little bit further into that longevity, you know, maximization aspect of, of um, creation inside of the art, utilizing trauma or the trauma that we create with a tattoo needle when we're actually doing the procedure uh, is a really effective way at like understanding and influencing how the tattoo is going to age as people, you know, get it, especially into advanced age, uh, but as, as it interacts with the environment. So I'm going to go over this. I don't have a script. If I mumble a lot, I'm sorry, my brain is still trying to make sense of um, how to explain this in the most efficient way without getting too technical for YouTube. All right. So first things first, we use our handy dandy skin model here, right? Epidermis, dermis, subcutaneous tissues underneath. What do we do when we tattoo? We are taking a needle. We are going past doo -doo -doo, the epidermis into the dermis, right? However far we're going to go. And we are saturating that area of the dermis with pigments, right? To create a tattoo. Now, when our needles go in, and this is something that most of us don't think about, it's like the human skin, Brian, uh, my buddy at uh, Scarlet Vale and Eugene, I don't remember what the name of your shop is in Arkansas, dude. He's, he's just prolific, amazing artist. We're doing a podcast, look out for it. Um, he, uh, he gave me this cool tip to tell everyone, right? Like if you think about the thickness of skin on average in the human body is go take a, a, thumb, a tongue depressor popsicle stick you lay it out, you look at the thin side, right? How, how thick it is, it's about two mils. That's how thick skin is on average in a human. I'm just not gonna eat soles of the feet or the eyelids, of course, which we have a video about how thick skin really is as well. But if you want like a, a nice tool to utilize to be like, this is how thick my skin is that I'm tattooing, go get that. It's small, right? That's how far we're going. If you got a needle lead and you got like four, four or five mils off that thing, woofa doofa, you don't know how far you're going. You're gonna be down into the, tissues way down. Anyways, I don't know where I was going with that, but anyways, um, our needles that are coming down are going to be going into the dermis and depositing the pigment that's there, right? But this angle, right, that, well, I can draw that a little bit better. This angle that we're utilizing in between the space, right? There we go. Um, is also going to influence not only how far that the needle has to travel through the skin, right? If we go at a shallower angle, right? off of something, which is this is going to have angle, we'll go A versus B, right? Um, if, if A, if A is, we'll say, uh, less than or greater to, well, we'll go angle A. Oops, I should put this backwards. Like I said, I'm trying to figure out how to do this as angle B, then, that, that, that. I'm trying to do this without too much science. Um, but that needle is going to be going at a further distance. We're going to have a bunch of things that are going to occur, right? One, our distance or travel that we're going to have to go through to actually get to, <laughs> that's a little bit wobbly, the area where we want to put the pigment is going to change, right? Even though it's microscopic, I mean, this can have effect, an effect. This distance, right? All right. This distance is greater than, right? This distance. You can just see it's a steeper angle. It has to travel further through the epidermis and further through the actual dermis, creating a longer throw that's necessary for this to actually get into the skin and be able to deposit the pigment effectively, right? If your hand is at a different angle while you're doing this, right, what's happening? You're going to have to go further. You're going to have to push harder. You're going to have to do more to get the pigment into the skin. So that's why we usually are recommending, like if you're doing line work, you're doing shading, your, ta your tattoo machine in general has to be between this, this safe angle, right? Because we're trying to mitigate that distance 
nullifying effect, right? Because if this distance is so great, there's gonna be so much resistance for that needle coming into the skin that most of the pigment is basically just gonna get absorbed or wiped off before it actually gets to where it's at. So what do you have to do to actually get the pigment down there? You have to go slower, right? To make sure that you're gonna have enough trauma broken up that the needles can pass through the skin effectively to drop the pigment where it needs to go. And that is gonna increase the chances of you scarring the tissues. So that's not good. That's not what we wanna do. We always wanna have it up. But in some cases, in more advanced tattoo settings, right, we can utilize this distance that's created and increased trauma to actually influence how the tattoo is going to heal down the road. Kind of interesting, right? It's counterintuitive. That's why I said this is going to be more of an advanced technique than not, right? So let's, let's get rid of some of this stuff. Get rid of this orange. At least it erases better than that freaking other ones. Isn't it? The green? Yeah, it was the green. Ugh, woofa doofa. I'll just, I'll just redraw it. Anyways, okay. So if we start looking at handy dandy skin model here again, let's do this. Do, 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 do. And we have a needle that we're going to be taking and implanting into the skin here, right? Let's just do this. This is going to be moving up and down. And we're going to be putting our pigment here, right? This angle, if we look off the back here, right? This is going to be our angle off the back. Um, is going to be at whatever angle it is, right? And as this needle moves up or down, this is going to be growing. This leading angle is not directly where this we see the needle, I guess, actually coming in contact with this uh, skin. I'm trying not to get into, like, trig. Sorry, guys. There we go. We'll go angle here. Where the needles are actually traumatizing the skin, right, is not going to be where we see, right? We're seeing the needle hit here, but realistically in the skin, it's actually ahead of it, depending on where our needle is going, right? So utilizing that, we know that we're gonna have basically like a great collection of pigment that's gonna happen kind of towards the front and it's gonna slowly move forward as that passes through the skin, right? We're not influencing any type of scar tissue in the back end here, even where we're seeing it, right? Like this, this area, if we're looking at it, this edge of that line, if we're doing line work, is gonna have less trauma, right, on the back side, but it's gonna have more on the front, right? So if we're looking at this, what does that mean, right? If we make an assumption about the more trauma being on one side and less on the other, as we age, our skin gets thinner, right? It pulls together, uh, loses some of the elasticity, and it just becomes weaker, right? But the pigment that we put in during the tattoo stays relatively constant throughout our lives due to, you know, just our body being awesome at holding on to it through immunological responses or even through the repair process. But as it like squishes down, as it comes closer together, right? As we age, which is a constant process as we get older, what happens to the pigment that's there? Well, it doesn't come back out. I mean, we don't wake up every day and, you know, if you have a tattoo, you see a bunch of tattoo on your sheets, right? Uh, some of it can be absorbed into the body, but most of it is just going to end up getting Oreo cookied, right? So you take an Oreo cookie, and you squeeze it, you twist, what happens? Cream comes out the side, right? And that's what's happening with our pigment here. That's why when you look at line work that's been done when somebody's 19 versus when they're you know, 40, the line work ends up being a little bit more occluded. It might be ghosted or it gets bigger. It ends up migrating, right? We can influence the way it's gonna migrate though by influencing trauma. That's why normally when you're running your line work, you always wanna have your line work, right? Lines pointing in. Why is that? That is because the less amount of trauma on the back here is gonna make it less likely for that pigment to migrate into this healthy, air quote, tissue, right? Um, versus the stuff that's been traumatized. Why? Because when we break down our skin through the mechanical process of tattooing, it has to remodel. When it remodels, it is scarred, right? Even if it's microscopic, it's never going to be 100% the same as it was before. And if there is going to be scar tissue in the area where we've done this, the pigment is gonna take the less resistance pathway, right? As the skin ages and it Oreo cookies to move towards. So rather than moving back into the healthy skin, it's almost gonna act like a buffer, right? The pigment's gonna wanna move towards wherever that needle has inflicted trauma. We can utilize that to ensure that our line work is always clear, right? If you are 
I said this is super complex to everyone, so I apologize. I am gonna get into some more. <laughs> if, uh, if we have line work, right? And if I'm doing a square on someone, right? And I always have my needle pointing in each way that I'm doing this, right? I can ensure that the outside edges of my tattoo are always going to stay tidier, straighter, cleaner looking than not, right? More often than not, what we'll see when people are doing tattoos nowadays, whatever their dominant hand is, they're gonna run the lines the same way. They're gonna be looking at this almost like if I was to do four or five lines or whatever the same way. I'm gonna to try to repeat the pattern I'm doing it each way rather than thinking about doing this differently, right? If I run my lines this way, I'm gonna run it like this as well because I'm right hand dominant. What does that do? Well, we're decreasing trauma, right? So we have less than T, right? We'll go to tattoo trauma, right? On the outside of this, right? But on the inside, we're gonna have a greater tattoo trauma, right? What's this mean? As it ages, this pigment's gonna wanna move that way. If I do the exact same thing on the other side, what am I doing? Well, I'm doing the exact same thing, right? I've got a less than trauma, that's tattoo wise, right? So this pigment wants to move, which way? This way, right? It's gonna wanna move that way. But on the other side as well, especially if I'm doing this the same way, boom, boom, right? That trauma, tattoo trauma is gonna be greater than. It's gonna to wanna to move that way as well. This is how we can tell which, uh, when we're like doing critiques on stuff, if somebody's right hand or left hand dominant, or how they actually had the person position when we're looking at the tattoo, right? If you see tattoos that have a little bit of ghosting, right, on one side versus the other, and it's consistent throughout the tattoo, that means that their angle of inflection, right, was going to be greater than what was needed. And that's increasing the amount of trauma that's going on, which is forcing the body as it ages to push the pigment along that scar line, decreasing clarity. So that's a worst case scenario, right? When we want something to be clean, but it's not going to be clean because we've kind of just screwed it up by not thinking about how our needles are running in relation to the design, right? Now on some tattoos, maybe we actually want like that blending to occur. Oh, interesting. If you see illustrative designs, right? Designs, can't multitask. Sometimes you'll see people will have, we'll call it blocking in color on average, right? You'll have shapes, right, whatever it is. This is gonna be color X, and it's gonna butt up to color Y that blends into color Z, right? And whatever the design is, I don't, I don't know. It's a face or a cat or a pigeon or whatever, right? We know that we're going to be doing these multiple colors that are going to be blending into each other, right? There's line work there isn't. It doesn't matter. Um, rather than blending these things really well, we're trying to get them to just like absolutely be blended by using whatever type of mag technique you're doing, you can think about the five to ten year gap on this stuff, right? When the colors start to settle and blend, and you can utilize your actual angle of insertion, your angle of inflection, as these things are coming together to end up pushing the pigment into another area, right? If you go hard line off this, and I have a very steep angle actually pushing this pigment into it, right? That's kind of a nasty friggin' arrow, whatever. Um, what's gonna happen is the skin thins and ages, right? Well, you already have trauma that's induced in both spots, right? There is already trauma all over the place. This is just like, that's what happens with a tattoo, right? But where the two colors end up butting up together, if you have a really steep angle, right? If there's a very steep angle that's actually butting up to where you've created this other color, you're increasing that amount of trauma. Let's say we have just, you know, our skin here, is gonna have a normal amount of trauma for the tattoo, but that spot where you have an overlap, there's a lot, right? A little bit more underneath this. You're just pushing that border of where you're actually gonna be scarring the person, which normally can be done over multiple sittings instead of just singles, which we can get into that in another video. But you've, you've created just more of a pocket where pigment can kind of blend and move. You can actually, at the five to 10 year mark, maybe even 20 year mark, you'll start to see these colors move together more and blend in skin, right? That Oreo cookie effect is like taking two Oreo cookies, squeezing them together as you press down, then smashing them together. Some of the cream's gonna get stuck together, right? And it's gonna migrate into those pathways that we've created through scarring. So when you're wanting something, and this 
this happens a lot with watercolor, especially. If you want something to look better five years down the road, think about how you can butt these things together and utilize the trauma, right, that you're uh, like inflicting on the body and how it's going to like age, how those pigments that are next to each other are gonna interact with each other and like, how far steep that angle is and how much additional trauma that you're creating is going to like end up affecting that blend zone that we have, right? Like I said, pretty technical. I didn't break out any Calgar tricks, so that's good. Rock and roll. And this is super advanced. This doesn't mean that everyone has to do it. I'm just talking if you want to really get into the nitty gritty of the technical aspects of tattooing, this is something that you should have in your mind. And it should be trained from the beginning, right? We should be thinking about where our needles are at all times, how they're reacting with the skin and what they're actually doing when we're doing it, right? If we are running a line and we just think about a simple line, left, right hand or whatever. And if I run a line with my hand going one way, the machine needle pointing the other, and I flip and I finish the needle going the other way, it's not going to look congruent, right? Normally what happens is you end up getting a step. This is the easiest way to test it yourself. It'll look like it's close, it's just off. So think about this, right? The way that we put the pigment in the skin is going to actually affect it as it heals. You want proof, go get a cup of water. And put a needle in it. Does it stay straight? No, it refracts a bit, right? What happens? It ends up stepping. This is basically what we're gonna see happening in the skin rock and roll. Let me know what you think. Like, subscribe, follow, do all that stuff. Buy us a coffee. I love coffee. Uh, you can see the links down in the um, description area. I don't know. And let us know if you like this. We have other stuff that's super duper technical that we can get out there for you. Um, and we can further explain this as well if you don't really get it. So hit us up in the comments. Let us know what you think. That's it. This is Ryan from Better Tattooing. Signing off.